It started off many years ago when I was working as a craft aide at uh, a small two-teacher school in Queensland. I was, um, my son was there and um, the principal asked me if I was interested in um, doing some work for him. So I spent one day with a potter, then I taught. Harry Memmick book in one hand and a lump of clay in the other. We moved to Tamworth and the opportunity arose to go to Tate. I did that for a good number of years, just loved it. Loved the challenge, loved all the fun stuff we did, the experimental firings. I felt that my work needed consolidation. I could do anything. I could fire anyway. I, somebody asked me to make this, I could make it. But I felt my work needed to become more my own work. enrolled in the distance diploma. Used to always get very inspired uh, at the residentials that we used to do twice a year. Great companionship of other potters, which I just loved, and the most wonderful tutors. I enjoyed it so much, that I, and I liked the space so much that I thought, this could be good to do a full-time course. So I packed all my goods and chattels and um, came to Canberra and started the degree course at ANU. And I was getting to the stage where I had to start developing my own uh, project and it started being based on Dad's oil can. And I made lots of ewers and put them in different firings then um, at assessment, I was asked which was my favourite piece. It was a wood-fired piece and I just loved it. When I, it was suggested that I would fire, I said, but I'm too old for that. And I don't have a 10 acre paddock anymore. I live in a town block. Well, soda fire was the answer to that. I put a piece in and I was hooked because you're playing with that unpredictability. Every firing's different. There's so many variables in soda firing that every time I fire, I start thinking, what can I do next time? What can I do from that result? And I think, yes, it's an ongoing process. But I work very intuitively. I don't put a lot of, you know, thought into making work, packing, yes, firing my kiln, yes, uh, and surface, yes, but the actual forms, I work intuitively. I will look at work and pick up the elements of work that I like and then try and incorporate it in the next piece, look at it and think, I can take that further or I can take that further. the food. 
sodium bicarbonate, what else? Sodium carbonate, or light soda eh? Yep. And uh, calcium carb. Right. So the calcium just keeps the particles mm. apart, makes it uh, easier to um, to vaporize. It's um, spread out a bit more. I think that excitement, unpredictability, the surfaces, the depth in the surfaces, yeah, they're all about layering and aging and I like that. There's a lot in the surface, that depth of the surface. The form to me is almost secondary. It's important because the two have got to work together, but it's that exploration of the surface. Yeah. And I guess it is about that connection to the environment because I do um, develop ideas from what I see and surfaces I see, the lichens on rocks, the textures within barks, the shapes of trees. Um, I really um, observe what's around me and I'd like people to be able to see that connection and perhaps go out and look at trees with a slightly different view. Look at surfaces with a different view. One of the things that gives me great pleasure is to see somebody looking at my work, running their hand over it and smiling. You know, getting that pleasure out of something that I've made. Creativity does come through from, from your environment, what you see, what you hear, you know, I think a lot of it comes from that. I just hope that people will view my work, that it will make them think about their environment. It's a journey of my life in a way. Which is forward. Oh yes, you've got black <laughs> on. Yeah. Hey?